We'll do that. That way I'm not running into issues. Uh, you played it intact. With the ceiling junk removed, it saved fairly little time, but removed a lot of unpleasantness. Okay, that's that's fair. Very, very fair. I should uh I should have got some juice. Got my 15 tacos today. Ate those suckers. They were good. I actually had a, um, uh, a new selection of things there that were never there before. They had some cucumbers there and I was like, okay. They also have these, these onions that are in, I guess, like jalapeno water or something like that. Or maybe just like regular chilies, you know. I don't, I don't really know, but um, like that's my go-to is getting that because I like onions. Onions taste good. see what's going on. Yeah. Let's see where this goes first. The charm. That'll probably do the same thing as the flame charm, but I don't think I got like a wind charm. Protection against anti-blue. Yeah, I don't think I got a wind charm from the last one. Felt like I was fairly thorough. Even with that removed, it's very mazy. It's a little grindy game. Yeah, I... Plus... It might not be fair, uh, a fair thing for me to say, but... At least for Fantasy Star 3, I don't really think the story was... Was, uh... Anything to get excited about. Just throwing that out there. that's riding a dragon. Silver pendant. Ruin my percentages. And with that in front. 
Fantasy Star 3 had a boring combat and boring story. Fantasy Star 2 had a decent combat and goodish story. Alright. Again, I'm going I'm to leave that one uh, for, for, for the Fantasy Star fans out there. Because I ain't touching those games. You can request them all you want. I'm not playing, no. I maybe there there could be a chance that I play something like Fantasy Star online. You know, there there could be a chance that I would I would consider a game like that. But that's it. Okay, so. Free pass. So it was just a disappointing step down. Fantasy Star 1, in your opinion, interesting to visit. Short enough, no bull crap. Bull duty. <laughs> this monster's name is Giant Gloop. I think I still have a holdover of uh, fire spells. Damage his kid. Okay, kid didn't take any damage. Uh, sure. Magma bomb. Which port offers auto map, reduced encounters, and accelerated leveling? It's always nice when they add a little bit of extra something something with ports and remasters and things like that. Oh, great. I guess I'm not stealing from you. Oh, okay. I get my character back. Boing! Antiviral. thought you had. Yeah, we're gonna have to change that. Doesn't hold your hand and expects you to figure out for yourself what to do, where to go, the 80s computer RPGs, which you like. Hmm. I'm I don't know how how I feel about games that hold your hand too much. Um Yeah, I don't I don't I don't necessarily know where I stand on that because I I would much rather at least, you know, thinking about this in the way that I am, I would much rather a game hold my hand too much than to just be, like, thrown out into a, a world with kind of no direction. Uh, I, I can definitely have a hard time with those types of games. Uh, 
but it's okay. It's it's not a, a ton of fun to have to talk to every single NPC to figure out where you want to go and what you need to do. It's like I just I just want to I want to I want to experience the main story. I you know just just point me in the direction I need to go and and I'll be fine. But at the same time. There's also those games uh, like Golden Sun Dark Dawn, for example. Uh, that one's just the first one that came off the top of my head where... You know, it's, it's a game where... You're basically getting tutorialed forever. It's a fairly, fairly easy game. Kind of game where you need to take notes those are the see those there are instances where i'm okay with taking notes but i would say most of the time if i'm taking notes uh the game the game goofed somewhere along the way for me um the game the game should have the tools in within it to allow me to to, to find the answers. Uh, I think a great example of that is uh, the Uncharted games. The Uncharted games, for the most part, you know, there are some small exceptions, but for the most part, uh, you will always know where you need to go because uh, the, the progression is is mapped out for you. You know, you see this yellow ledge or bar or or thing, bobber, and you know, like, okay, I need to find my way to that or make my way over there because that's a place where I can jump. And then when they give you the puzzles, you have this notebook that you can flip back and forth, and you can cross-reference and try to figure out what the the puzzle is based off of the information that you have in this notebook. And so I, I feel like that's a, a great example of how how information can be displayed to the player without just giving them the answer, you know. So I, I would love for more games to do something like that. Wow, we used nine of nine of those tablets. Ma goodna. Apparently we have the flu. You enjoy a hand holding, but in RPGs you like to explore. You need to give the player a goal, but there's a difference between having a goal and what exactly to do. An open game lets you figure it out yourself. Uh, aren't really about main stories. Those ideas are kind of conflicting. Expecting games from the 80s to have tools within it to remember what to do. Not reasonable. Well, I'm, I'm not. I'm not saying that it is reasonable. I'm just saying that these are the type of tools that I want in the games that I I I play. If they are expecting me to to figure it out. Um. So when it when it comes down to that, I know that those older style games are are not going to mesh well with me because you know I don't I don't necessarily want to take notes or draw maps or 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 anything like that and uh, if I have to draw a map in a game we we have a, a really big problem one of the reasons why I have uh, no interest in playing like Etrian Odyssey for example not a big dungeon crawler fan for one but also, the idea of drawing maps with the stylus and things like that, it, that's, that's not something that I, I want to do. Um, okay. 
Yeah, there's a, yeah, there's no RAM for that. I, I I get it. It's just part of the reason why I wouldn't play those those games. Um, in in some similar ways of why I don't uh, I don't play games on harder difficulties is you know I. I just, I just, I just wanna, just wanna play the game. You know, I don't, I don't wanna get bogged down by boss fights having to take ten plus attempts to do something. You know, give me, give me a couple of tries, two, three, four tries, where you know, okay, I, I learned something from that fight. The boss did something that I've never seen before. Let me try again, and I'll, uh, I'll figure it out on my next attempt. You know, but when you start start getting into a crazy amount of attempts it's just like well you know, I'm not really having that much fun anymore uh, and there, there are some exceptions of course uh, but for the most part that's that's where I sit I have no idea what happened right there Oh, my character composition change. That's weird. We Dragonians are comprised of a head, body, and tail. That must change the order of the head, body, and tail to unveil a new path. Let it be the head, body, then tail. building a game now, it's best to put tools in the game? Absolutely. Right, we are body, head, tail right now. Hey, and you know that. You always pick the minimum difficulty. For you, a game has to prove it has a reason for you to want a harder difficulty than the minimum. Ooh. I don't think I've heard anybody go with that route before. Most of the time, if anybody comments on difficulty, it's how uh, I'm a wimp for, for playing on the easier difficulties when the, the harder difficulties are not even hard. please no okay the tail to be in the front.
very confused right now. Seems very clear to me that I need to get the tail up in front. But that's not occurring. Is there another platform that I need to... to visit, perhaps? I know I let down some stairs. stupid posturing by games players. I'm definitely aware. 100% aware. Uh, obviously the point of difficulty levels is to enable more people to enjoy the game. I would agree. Put the body in the head and that. Okay, so maybe if I... If I reset here now... Nope, I'm still body in the head and the tail. I can rearrange my party. Hmm. Can you make a comment here? Uh, I, I, I might figure it out. I might figure it out. Give, give, give me a little bit. Give me a little bit. I I know uh, I know this types of uh, this type of thing can be extremely frustrating because I've I've been in in uh, in this type of situation before where you know I know the answer and the person is is not is not really accomplishing the right thing. And it's like, ah, oh, you just need to do this. Like, ah, oh, but I am trying my best. Let me let me start utilizing new clans here. Let's let's kill this enemy. Uh, 
uh, but for you, you find a lot of game designs to have the type of difficulty that doesn't interest you at all. I, I can agree with that. A lot of them are just increasing numbers, and that's not necessarily fun. So like I was saying, without card restrictions, you think Yu-Gi-Oh! is just a glorified coin flip because Exodia Solitaire decks would really be the only meta choice that makes any sense to you unless you have some hand trap to deny card draw in your opening hand. And that's just rough. You don't say. I'm actually learning a little bit about um, Yu-Gi-Oh! as uh, time, time goes on. I learned that Yu-Gi-Oh! cards have multiple types of, of rarities associated with them. Which is kind of crazy. And so, there are Yu-Gi-Oh! cards that are like uh, super rare, you know, as an example, super rare. And then they have a Yu-Gi-Oh card that is like star super rare. And then they have like star super rare foil. And then and then some other stuff. change the order of the head, body, and tail to unveil a new path. Let it be the body, head, and tail. think what was before this room. to reset. Try again. I'm going to leave this room and and come back and see if there's anything prior to this room that's that's helpful.
Looks like that was not the case. Is my party composition rearranged? It is rearranged here. So... to be another way to rearrange party members then there it is all right see see i can figure things out i can do it i can do it it just you know i, I gotta <laughs> i gotta go through all the options first fuck a fool <laughs> no, I just had to I had to I had to start thinking about it from other angles. Interesting that Razley is going first right now. Very interesting. Not only do Yu-Gi-Oh cards have rarity additions, but they also have additions. And the addition printed can change the pricing point. Oh yeah, I'm. I've been learning a lot of crazy things about cards. And uh, you know how they have like certain types of foils, and and those foils are not incredibly. Uh, noticeable. Um, and so you kind of have to like figure out the foils on your own. It's just like, well, suck a boot. All right, so we are tail, body, head. Meta shifts affect Yu-Gi-Oh card pricing a lot as well. That also doesn't surprise me. Uh, so where did it go? Okay, it go went right there. That helpful for me though. I don't know if I can push that down, but we're going to find out if I can push that down. Oh. That's not how I thought the solution would work. We're not done with this puzzle yet. We're gonna hold off on that. Blocking play entirely is kind of a crappy mechanic in most... Oh, yeah, actually I wanna do this. Most PvP games. Magic the Gathering had a problem along these lines with decks that destroyed land. You know, a lot of people well, okay, in my casual play, I didn't have any problems with with land destroying. Yeah, it was annoying. Yeah, it could have it, it it could be a pain in the butt. But at the same time, you know, there's so much infinite combos and in junk. Like, what are you going to do?
And then Storm is a thing. Okay, so that presumably gets me access to that treasure chest. Which means that body, tail, head might be the next solution that I need. They mostly got rid of the mechanic. They got rid of mana burn too, and I'm still someone who who misses mana burn. No, I don't I don't play magic anymore nowadays. I need to Um I should probably get rid of my cards. Um I've I've been learning recently that my my collection is probably more expensive than I thought it was because weird cards are becoming um, better. What did I say? Body... Body tail head? I think I already did body tail head. I think that's what got me... No, no, actually, I don't think I did body tail head. Excellent. Earth charm. Okay, I definitely min missed the wind charm. Like a thousand percent. Let's get rid of the mechanic, which luckily you can do because of their policy of old cards becoming invalid. Oh, that has its downsides. You just think that that's a very stupid puzzle if you don't know about pressing select. Yeah, I I had yet to try pressing select. Um, I, I would say I, I don't think... I don't recall games having you... or letting you change your party order with select, so... That's one of the reasons why I didn't just come to mind at all. Should I go back and look for this earth charm. I don't think I'm ever going to equip it. We might have to mark here. Future me, we might have to cut here. Western Prince versus the Japanese Prince. I've been learning about that too. There's a there's a market for uh, because Wizards of the Coast, specifically for for Magic. I don't know if this is the same thing for for Yu-Gi-Oh. But for for Magic, uh, Wizards of the Coast, <laughs> son of a gun. Uh, they they limit who you can sell, you know, like, certain cards to, as far as, like, regions. And so, uh, people in Japan really covet certain English printings of cards, whereas in the United States, there's some people who really covet uh, the Japanese printings of cards. And so you have this, uh... It's like back and forth of people wanting to buy, you know, cards that they don't normally have access to. It's very, very interesting. Kissy Wissy. Alright, 
two two turns in a row is disrespectful. Uh, what are you now? Okay, you're still still that. Uh, you're black and white. Let's just steal from you. But I, I had a feeling this would happen. And see black, that does not bother me. That you was one of these. You knew what to do, you just didn't know how to do it. I also wasn't 100% sure if it was possible was my my bigger problem. If land destruction is not highly optimized, you can play around it. If it is highly optimized, it just kind of turns off the game. I don't disagree with that. But I also think that there's a lot of unfun things. All right. I think everybody's dead. It's, it's totally, it's the white field effect. Okay. Um, I think, I just think that there's a lot of things in magic that are totally unfun. And I'm not saying that, that uh, land destruction is at the bottom of that list or anything like that. I'm just saying that, that I don't see land destruction decks, you know, killing you on, on turn one. Hero. Alright, I have a feeling Razzly's gonna die here, cause... You know, we don't... We don't have, uh... The magic levels. Actually, this is kind of a waste. Probably shouldn't have done this. Let's defend. just a bad game design problem oh it's gone if you you play casually many problems aren't severe very true very very true um, granted I had to deal uh, heels who was here yesterday Cyrus to uh, he was a uh, he was very good at creating decks that were uh, were really really obnoxious to play against um, in the casual space. That is, he had uh, uh, like in deck situations where you don't really have a whole lot of stuff to work or to work with. We were put in situations where a lot of our decks were creature based, and so. Uh, we would play uh, big multiplayer games at lunch in high school and You know, we would have like four or five people in them and he'd be running decks with Orm's prayer and uh, Righteous cause so that whenever people attacked he would gain life and uh, Whenever people attacked him they would gain more life or he would gain more life 
all kinds of crazy stuff. And then, you know, he ran that one card where if you have 50 or more life, you win the game, so... He was kicking everybody's booty. Uh, this boss fight is incredibly obnoxious. I'm doing no damage to this boss fight because I don't have any dark elements. to level two. Uh, no, you don't have anything to prevent that. Hero damage. Uh, Mana Burn was interesting. I think it was prop. Uh, I think it probably wasn't long-term great. I, I, I liked Mana Burn just because. I mean, sure, having to to keep track of of what's going on there is probably not good. Uh, but. Forcing your opponents to get into situations where... Did I really just kill this guy with four damage? Uh, forcing your opponents to be put in situations where, you know, they have to take damage from mana burn or something like that. Or... Or, um... And even more interesting situations where you're... You take their turn for them and you're like... I'm just gonna tap all your lands and then have you take uh, 13 mana burn of damage or something like that. You know, I just feel like those types of scenarios were, were fun. They were very rare. You didn't get to do them very often. But in the grand scheme of things, you know, yeah, I. I can understand why they wouldn't want to have or want to keep that level of bookkeeping. Because keeping track of spent mana and things like that is, is already obnoxious as it is. Saving. All right, we've got to fight a dark dude, and I I can uh, I can handle that. Ostrom restores large HP. Anything that restores um, white or black status effects is where my problem is. Alright, good time to mark. We didn't need that other one. <laughs> 